Thank you, Chris. <coughs> Can you all hear? Yes. Um, I first would pay tribute, first of all, to Chris, uh, acting, if you like, as navigator, pilot, and general uh, guide. Uh, I pay tribute to the colleagues on the uh, panel who really knew what they were talking about, so my job was, as it were, to listen and make sure we all pointed in the same direction at the end. And, of course, to Nick Goodwin, who did a lot of the work, Anna Dixon, who did the other bit of the work, and uh, the redoubtable Tess, who took all the, of the notes. So thank you to all of them. Um, the first thing, I, I'm not going to speak for more than a few minutes. First of all, there's an interesting question why this study was set up. And <clears throat> I think uh, from an outsider, and I always play the role of the professional outsider, the, the observer can see that uh, while m much activity in terms of health and healthcare takes place in general practice, all the research about performance and quality and so on takes place as regards looking at uh, the acute sector, and so there was a need to, as it were, uh, get a real grip upon what's going on uh, in terms of quality in general practice. Some movements in the direction of understanding and addressing quality from 2004, COF and so on, but still there was a sense that uh, uh, there was a work needing to be done. How did we do it? We commissioned research, um, studies in various domains, uh, we looked to expert commentators, we engaged with public and practitioners, and then we sat around and deliberated. What are the messages? Current state of uh, play. Uh, standards from the research generally good. Uh, generalism, the bedrock of the delivery of the service, good also, but no room for complacency. Uh, and room for improvement. Why? Because widespread variation in performance, examples are given in your papers, but I'll just cite one uh, example, the quality of uh, diagnosis, where you have differences of uh, eightfold uh, variations in uh, the number of people who might have required urgent referral and did not uh, get it in terms of symptoms for cancer. So quality of diagnosis, quality of referral, variations as I've just mentioned, and quality of prescribing variations in performance. Some of those variations, significant cost to the NHS uh, uh, as, as is set out in the report. So you've got variations in performance and you've got variations also in the experience that patients have of the care that they are receiving, particularly in the area of the continuity of care in this uh, notion of a therapeutic relationship and a therapeutic bond. Patients admitted to hospital when they needn't be necessarily, could be uh, better treated in the community, uh, and there are significant costs associated with that. Large numbers of patients not being able to see their preferred doctor and uh, patients with long-term uh, conditions not getting uh, uh, the care plan. It's not really about care plans, it's about planned care, it's about continuity of care, it's about coordination of care. So that variation in experience and variation in performance. Now some variation of course is inevitable. The key question, the, the, the $64,000 question is what variation becomes uh, unacceptable variation. And more needs to be done is what we're saying uh, on understanding that. And then the second, very briefly, the second major point about current state of play is widespread lack of data, of real information about many aspects of care and the need for a greater focus on uh, measurement of quality and with a capital T, more emphasis on transparency. So, if that's the current state of play, what are the challenges and the responses? And I'll be as brief as I can be here. The uh, first challenge is that practices need to adapt, general practices, and we're talking about practices, we're not talking about GPs alone, need to adapt to changes in the world about them, demographic changes, the advent of new technology, 
and, quite rightly, the increasing expectation of patients of them. And if those are the challenges, what is the response that general practice must offer to that? We say that quite radical changes are called for. Some are practical, some are cultural. Let me offer a, 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 a few. Really great challenge, a new deal for patients is what we call for. Greater involvement of patients in their care. Greater engagement with them in the journey they're on in this notion of therapeutic bond. After all, patients and the imp uh, input of patients are intrinsic to both quality control and the improvement of quality. Nurturing that relationship. Secondly, we must value generalism, but we must also embrace specialist knowledge in the wider context of, of, of general practice. Thirdly, the general practitioner must move and general practice must move from being the, nav the, the gatekeeper to the system to the navigator of the system. A very significant role to be placed on the shoulders of general practice, but critical given patients with complex needs needing to be signposted through an ever complex system. Not just the NHS, but the wider public services. Two or three other points about responses. That we need to accelerate the move towards multidisciplinary professional practices, where practice nurses, other professionals, and the interaction with other public services becomes the norm, because that's what patients need and want. And we must quicken the pace away from uh, uh, practice of working in isolation towards uh, the idea, idea of federated networks, working with each other and with the wider uh, world of other professionals. And two last points. The first is something that I've been banging on about for many years. The general practice needs to look, in our expression, beyond the surgery doors to the wider world, to the need for prevention, to, to uh, uh, see that as an intrinsic part of general practice, and to take a more effective role in public health and inequalities. And, in other words, move from treating health, uh, illness to promoting health as well. And to do all this, strong clinical leadership to support those who want to move forward to identify those who are not moving forward and uh, to support uh, efforts to cause them uh, to move forward. I'll finish by saying if those are the cultural and practical challenges, what, happens, what has to happen within the practice itself? What ha has to happen in any practice? They need to take responsibility for their own practices in terms of tackling the variations we've talked about. They need to focus on quality improvement. That means a stronger commitment to transparency, sharing information. First of all, getting the information and then sharing. A strong emphasis, we say, on peer review in those areas which are less easy to measure quantitatively and a better use of data, IT, measurement, to monitor performance, to measure performance, to embed the notion of improvement. So as you can be aware of your own performance, aware through benchmarking of its variation, and then begin to address it. That has to happen within the practice. That's a, I hope, a plausible and uh, uh, sensible uh, tour d'horizon of the report. I'm sure you may have questions afterwards. Thank you.